to Design 380. This week, or this video is about, it's a guided video on decreasing the centering diameter. Uh, if we look here, if we look at the Orlov figure 246, we're going to be working on A. Uh, B is an option. We actually did this a couple of years ago. We we're going to go all the way to C this year. Um, it's arguably the best solution. It does require a bit of rework of both the gear and the hub. Uh, B is maybe uh, reasonable, which is why we did it before, where the gear is not affected. Uh, this time we're going to go for the gusto. Uh, so oh, back to Fusion. Uh, make sure you're in the right spot here in your data panel. Upload the file. Uh, for me, just dragging from the downloads. Make sure you see step, correct file name, solid size, upload. Again, you can close this. And once you see the activity icon finish, you should be ready to go. Again, if you want to see that back, the button is still there. make sure we have the right thing. As we look in here, it's from the step. It's by me. Four seconds ago, it looks good. And double click to open, close my data panel. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, got a partial file here. Uh, looks like about an eighth. And we've got everything that we might need to have. Uh, what would this look like as a whole? Uh, shift N to turn on color uh, pattern, just to have a look. I'm not going to go through with this pattern components. And you should be able to just draw a box around them. Maybe not, maybe yes. Otherwise, pick them like so. Axis, uh, the Y, obviously, not three, four, five. Oh, it is six. There we go. So that's what we have. Uh, just as a part. Cancel that. Uh, I am going to save my history here. So right click at the top, capture design history. You'll notice a bunch of things happen. The usual sets it up. Now when you do that, unfortunately it makes everything draggable. So I'm going to create uh, a little arrangement of parts, uh, locking them down into to the universe. So I'm going to make the rim just probably closest to the universe grounded. Thereafter, under assemble rigid group components, make sure including child components is turned on, pick the rest and lock them all together. You'll notice you now have a new joint, rigid group. Now it's none of it's pullable. Perfect. Let's turn on also an inspect section analysis again using the Z Y. Uh, no offset. Let's have a look. So we can see here that somebody uh, has modeled this. Maybe Colin, maybe not. See the threads are not modeled this time, but it looks like a downloaded part. Probably these numbers give away in the master car. So what we have here is a in the diagram let's have a look in the diagram there's a <laughs> there we go it's not exactly the same the the gear uh, tooth is not cut whereas in ours it is through the center otherwise exactly the same more or less uh, we need to move all this down so First question is how do we move things in Fusion? Do we just delete them and rebuild them? Or can we take another happier option? Uh, can we move, for example, whole components, stuff like that? In this video, we're gonna be mostly using, uh, sorry, move, copy, press pull, and potentially delete and remove some stuff. 
to see how it goes. We'll go through fairly slowly, uh, make sure everybody can keep up, and you should just be replicating this. Let's make sure that our reference is here. So we're going to be making fairly arbitrary shifts uh, based on dimensions. Just follow along with what I do, and we'll all end up with a reasonable amount of uh, work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you can see here that there is some, there's going to be a need probably for a sketch here, cut away. We might do that later. Uh, but first, we're just going to get a feel for what Colin has modeled this as. Now, one of the big advantages of this cut is that we can just ask for things like radius right on these end phases. So the radius looks like a one. I'm just going to actually write this down. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to use a standard radius. And let's have a look. Click away and then click again. Hmm, interesting. Let's see here if we can figure that one out a bit better. It's not an even number. Maybe if I measure it this way, three. Let's see, can we find anything else that's going to give us the same numbers? Two. Mm, strange. Different sizes, two. Two again. So we've got twos and threes here. That's a radius two. It's radius two again. It seems more common. Clicking away to deselect two. Sorry, I need to check this one. I'm just looking again. Two again. I think I'm going to go for two everywhere. Uh, one of the advantages of turning on history is we have access to parameters. I'm going to look for change parameters. And I'm going to make my own here. So I'll call one stand standard. Uh, Riyad for radius. And we'll call that two. Uh, it's fairly obvious, and we'll do another, do another one, sorry, called standard stand jam. If we wished, we could just set them equal, but we'll have them independent in case we want to change them later. Right now, no model parameters say okay. So we'll use those throughout. Um, another thing is, is there any small offsets no for example here in b we have this small offset where it's not touching on purpose uh, here we don't we get away from that so let's just go with that we have this problem here we're going to be looking at later so can we move things keep it in mind what we're looking at now here is just a sorry uh section view if we want to turn that off and on we can do that. I'm going to try pulling some stuff down. I'm going to pull this surface down first to about here. It's not going to touch, so we're going to have to add some parts probably. So let's do that first. Um, we can probably do this in the upper level, top level of the assembly. If we wish, we could also do it within. Let's try both. See what happens. Press pull perhaps or move. Let's try move first. Move what? Uh, face. Should center on the kind of midpoint of that axis. Let's just try moving it. Now we can see what's going on here. It's not actually changing the radius, it's just shifting it around. It does do quite a good job though. It's not exactly what we are what we're after. So escape out of that. Let's try the other one. Press pull. Same thing. Uh, this one doesn't ask for what you want to do. It just assumes usually phases. Uh, this is probably more what we want. We can see it. Not only is it moving it, it's changing the radius. So it's not moving the origin of that arc or that cylindrical phase. So that's what we want. 
Now let's just put zero in again, see how it works. And I'm going to turn on my analysis view so I can see what's happening exactly. Try. Oh. So right down to the origin here is okay, so zero. So what we're actually getting here is the measurement of the radius of that cylindrical surface. So let's go for 35. Now, let's have a look here, pulling down some other stuff as well. Is it possible to add something? I'm gonna turn off my preview by pressing on my keyboard in the Mac here command. For you, it might be control. Control here uh, zooms my mouse, but I'm gonna turn off the preview, add some stuff here. Huh. Interesting, that seems to be not bad. So give us what we want. Yep, so control again. One thing is though, it's getting this fillet is getting a little strange in here. You can see it's not quite right. Let's cancel out of this. One of the things we would probably like to do first is get rid of all these troublesome uh, chamfers and fillets in here. We can see these two at the top here are fine. We'll leave those. They're not going to be affected by any of this. We have a chamfer disappearing over here. And this fillet is simplified in here as well. So let's get rid of some stuff. So this is essentially our first move. If I press delete here, just on the keyboard, it'll actually delete the, the chamfer entirely and make a feature. Uh, why did it, what's this angle here, or the fillet here is just actually the rim of the gear. If we hide the gear, we can see what's going on. Nice. Now it's tempting to just keep going, you know, for example, pick this and press delete and all this stuff. This is not efficient. What we can do is actually edit the feature and add more stuff to it. Are we gonna, is this one bad? It looks like this back fillet is not moving. And the front fillet is not, it's just kind of sliding. So maybe we need to have a better plan here. Let's just get rid of those two. So we have our edge coming out. I wonder, could we, for example, just drag, no, not the whole body, just the faces. Now there's snaps here, so notice I'm snapping. If I pick these two guys, oh nice. And it actually just turns this face inside out. I can actually click the front face of that guy. So again, I'm gonna cancel that and redo it. So again, let's have the spur gear show up. I wanna move these two faces, so let's go with move. I'm gonna snap to that middle, just so I know where I'm going. Oh, not the whole body though, just the face. Snap again, pick the fillet as well. If I don't pick the fillet, it's gonna push it up. It, well, it might do, who knows what it'll do. Let's try, Ooh, pulls it with it. To be safe, let's add the fillet. Now, as I start pulling, I'd like to just go smooth with this. It turns out if I, once I start, I can just line it up. Nice, perfect, doing well. So we're doing well. We've kind of skipped past some filleting issues. That looks good. Now we need to move this down, what we did before. So let's do another move. Sorry, press pull. Gonna try and select, no, I can't select through. It's hard to get that, but I can just click and hold. It gives me a list of faces that it's in the way or occluded faces. One, I need two. No, that was the same one again. Sometimes this gets a little fiddly. Another way to do this is to pick them by hiding and showing. Now we have two selected, they're overlap, you get the strange pattern. Nice. You can actually pull down now. 
and get them both at once. And we were going for 35 before. Does that work? No, we can see it's giving us a warning, a warning here. It's running into that fill. I hope I can get my mouse. <laughs> Get it facing the right way. We're starting to run into the fillet. Let's try and keep the fillet size as was. It might be a good reason for that. Let's go for instead, say, 38. Mm. 36. Let's have a look at our reference. It's probably closer. Let's go for 36. Automatic. Okay. Well, we're doing really well here. Nice. What else do we need to do? Well, it looks like the fastener has to shift as well. The whole fastener assembly along with this hole needs to go down. Let's try with the analysis on. I wonder how do we do this? Right, so let's try move. Let's move components first. And we'll try for, a, let's go for something that gives us a nice center point. Now, because there's a hole in this face, I can't easily pick it. If I hover, my hands are off the mouse right now. If I hover and highlight the face, if while I'm doing this, then press control, it keeps that highlighted. And I can kind of carefully get in there. And that's not right. So repick. Not really, it's not participating. How about in the front, middle, right down in there? And you, two components. Gonna move them down a set amount because I'm gonna have to type it in again. So let's go down again. Let's have a look at where we're going. Mm, we need to leave quite a, almost a squarish down there, squarish result. Now, why doesn't this work? Well, it's actually the joint is getting in the way. I can actually just suppress this. Try again. Move, not faces, components. So it looks good. Gonna move down 20. Now I'm gonna move again. This time I'm gonna shift these faces. I'm just looking at this. Why is this here? Uh, it's tempting to undo here, but what I can actually do is pull the history back, step it back once. It's always been there. So on our delete, so if we want, we can step back. Delete that as well. Nice. Step it out. We lost our move, which I kind of did on purpose. Let's do it again and do it the right the right way this time. Capture position should be turned on. So we'll pick our parts, components in this case. Capture position. Again, it's stuck. So we have to we'll let us do it while we're in the dialogue. So go in here, suppress that again. Repeat, move, copy. Make sure components are fixed or chosen, sorry. Then move down 20. Once you get kind of there, type in 20. Nice. Capture position is toggled on. Say, okay, creates a new feature. Then it won't get lost. Another move, this time faces. Draw a box around it. Try and get it about right. So I get the whole thing. 
Again, this is the cutaway version. If you turn the analysis off, you should see the full amount. Turn back on. Now you'll notice what's going on here as well. We have to do it in multiple stages because each component has its own phase of minus 20. Oh, <laughs> pulls it down anyway. Nice, that looks good. So working away, Let's see what else do we have here? Let's pull down the outside face of this guy. Now I'm gonna hide the spur gear to get the selection going. So first a press pull, getting used to this now. Uh, I might be able to select through and see which one's which. There it is, or is it? No, that's not it. There it is. Yeah. So let's look at that. Get it lined up. Let's see, it's given us some errors here. So instead of automatic, try a new offset. Uh, that does work. So there's two things here. Automatic means it will adjust uh, an existing feature. And automatic will usually try for modify. A new offset will actually override anything that's in there and will kind of allow you to pull past things that are getting in the way. It can be a little fiddly getting it to show properly though. Now, it would make sense, I think, here to go for minus 20 again, because that'll give us our original amount of material around the fastener. It, it's a little smaller, won't be exactly the same amount of material, but it looks right. Minus 20 again, new offset this time. So, let's see where we are here. It looks good. All we're missing is a thinning of the web here, just to make it exact. How do we do that? So what I'm gonna do is look and see what we're doing. Everything looks fine. Got need to thin this web down a bit. So there's multiple ways to do this. I'm worried about this fill it up here. So I'm actually gonna go all the way back to that delete and delete that as well. Different should work. There we go. So now we can do a new sketch and just shift this. Now I'm going to activate this part, see where it is. There it is. It's tempting to do a sketch. My usual sketch is to do it on this face, my usual ploy. However, there's an easier way this time. We're going to go at it the opposite way because this is probably going to be our only sketch. This time I'm going to do a sketch on this face. Create sketch, project the edge. What does this do? It gives us a profile that gives us exactly the area we want to move, finish the sketch and do an extrude. Just dig it in, minus two. Interesting and great. So, why did I pick minus two? Well, I've got a fillet or two coming here. So up to the, I can either do this at the top level or inside this component. I'll do it at the top level. Fill it. Uh, I can pick the whole area if I wish. But the problem with that is it tends to do the edges as well. Don't want this for sure. So get rid of that. Actually, you can just X the whole thing. Don't get rid of the dialogue. Let's pick better. Start pulling to activate it. Type in standard rad or radius. Two. Say OK. Nice. Now we've got to deal with fillets in here as well and some parameter shifts here. So let's go in here and make this safe first. So parameters again, 
uh, that offset inside the rim is what we want. Nope. Sorry, inside the spur gear, the extrude. I pick to, I'm going to change that to minus stand right again. It shouldn't change anything. But this, if we change this now, we'll get the proper geometry every time. Say OK. We need some filleting in here. Now, again, tempting to press fill it again, but no, don't do that. Do it with the same one. Want the standard on one side. Now I can't tell which one I'm getting here. Let's hide our spur gear. And just simply add it to this standard radius. You might have to press control or command. Make sure you're seeing that. That looks right. Now, if I hide the rim, there's an overlap here. If I pick exactly the same fillet, it's going to be probably touching. It's going to be unmachinable, and it's not a great idea to have one fillet touching another fillet of exactly the same uh, radius. It's going to over position the, the two pieces as well. So hide the rim in this case. We're going to add another fillet on the inside edge of that. Pull, oh, pull. So we can see here we're adding to this. That's not right. We actually need a new selection. We see that that now works. We have the ability to make our new fillet. I'm going to call that stand rad plus one. So which will be three. Let's turn the visibility on of everything. Make sure everything's working. Now, before we go any further here, is this a good idea what I'm doing here? This could work. Right, so this is fine-ish. However, there is, even in this part, it's going at this in different ways. We can see here on the outsides, they tend to have not a round, but a chamfer. Again, we remember all the way back from our flow lines week, probably don't want outside rounds anyway. Let's adjust that. So what we can do is actually just get rid of that one edge. Say OK. Hide the rim. Go in here and chamfer this guy. Chamfer. Where is that? I can't find it. Chamfer. Pick the inside edge. Start it up. You'll notice the interface looks the same. We're going to go for a square, equal distance. And this time, let's go for standard chamfer. Same argument as before. We're going to have the edges of the chamfer sitting right on top of the standard radius of the other part. Let's say plus one. That gives us a three chamfer. Turn everything back on. Have a look. Everything's looking good there. Let's have analysis on. Check it against our reference. Can't really see if they've got a jumper in here. We assume they do, maybe. Probably should do. Everything else looks good. Uh, we're missing a chamfer on this corner. Right here. Let's edit that. Add one. Make that one the standard. Not three, but just standard. So then we have one that's at standard plus one, one at standard. So you're okay to that. So look. I haven't adjusted anything up here. Added these back in. Fix this. No, nothing there. You can see here that Colin forgot to model the chamfer on the inside of the hub. Let's add that. We'll go for the standard one again. So this is our smaller one. It's highlighted. You can select through usually. That looks right. Sharp corners at the top, chamfers on the inside. I'm 
Your friend's looking good. Turn off our analysis. Let's do one last thing, which is a little test. Uh, just to see if it looks reasonable. We're going to do the components again. Access the Y. And we have six. Press the wrong button there, sorry. And the nuts are getting, the fasteners are getting a little close, but not too bad. Not too bad. Cancel that. There we go. That's how to transfer or move our design from figure 46A, which we're given. Decrease the reduction, uh, decrease the centering uh, positioning. In this case, the diameter to go from 46A down to a more complicated version, which is 46C. Follow along with that. And what we're looking for, just to make sure everybody's got the right answer, we're going to look for a, uh, where am I looking here? Properties. Uh, again, depend, you can reselect in here. I'm going to select the whole, the whole assembly, just, and this is the sixth of the whole assembly. And let's have a look at physical. And the mass depends on the material. I'm using a standard stainless steel, which is what my fusion already defaults, always defaults to, uh, or just defaults to. What we're after here is the volume. So, I don't know if this is so great. How do we change this? Why don't we go for centimeters? Then we will do another properties. Pick the whole thing. And we get it in cubic centimeter, cubic centimeters. Let's go write this down. So the volume we're looking for is 122.96. Cubic centimeters. And we'll give you a little range, maybe plus or minus a half or so. But that's what we want to see, uh, just to make sure everything went well. If you're not getting this, um, it's usually from the filleting or the chamfering. Uh, just make sure you've got the right numbers in there. And now it's over to you. Thanks for watching. And we will see you in class uh, next time.